Dinner and a Book is supported by the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation of Elkhart, celebrating the spirit of Alice Martin and her love of good food and good friends. is The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek by Kim Michelle Richardson. In it, Cussie Mary Carter is not only a book woman, she's also the last of her kind. Her skin is shade of blue, unlike anyone else's. If she wants to bring the joy of books to the hard scrabble Kentuckians, she's going to have to confront dangers and prejudice as old as the Appalachians. Let meet my guest, South Bend School Superintendent Todd Cummings, to learn about this period in American history. Welcome! Hi, Gail. I'm thrilled to be here. I'm so glad to have you, and little did I know when I was reading this book that you had grandmothers and family that lived in Kentucky. So I was raised by these strong Southern women who are in Kentucky at the same time, and when my brother and I were older, we realized we had grown up eating Depression-era food that we still make for the holidays now. I think that's amazing, and it's a good family history. You know, we're going to talk a little bit about that that period. Let's just talk briefly about the 1930s and what why we needed the book service at the time. It was very poor time, wasn't it? It was, it was a bad time. It was a very poor time, especially in Troublesome Creek. Folks are scratching basically the earth for seeds, for rabbits, for what they can eat. And so, as you read the book, you realize the importance of food but just how hard scrabble the time was. It really was, and uh, we're gonna talk about what we're going to prepare, and I have pre-chopped a lot of root vegetables. They talk about turnips and potatoes uh, and beets in the, in the book, uh, so I've chopped up those. I'm going to add rosemary, salt and pepper, and uh, some olive oil. Now, they wouldn't have had olive oil, but they right. may have had some lard, you know, leftover right. from cooking the rabbit, or maybe not. Maybe they just threw some water in, uh, which I might, might end up doing too. So you're going to get started on your beautiful cherries jubilee right cherry delight oh delight what? so jubilee that's when you light it up right thanks for even in my grandma right. of course even in my grandmother's uh mixing bowl today so we're i'm making a Ooh. cherry delight which would have had readily accessible ingredients it's um a poor version of a cheesecake and so we make it in the holidays and I grew up eating it, and I'm going to make it today. Wonderful. You're bringing the family forward. You're keeping some of those great traditions. And I think that's very important to do in our lives, is to connect the generations. So why don't you get started? Mm -hmm. You're going to fill up a graham cracker pie crust, right? Right. So I okay. have, I'm sorry, so I have a, a pre-made graham cracker pie crust. I have already mixed in two tubes of Philadelphia cream cheese. I'm gonna fold in the rest of my Cool Whip. Yes. And then we'll get to confection, confectioner sugar and vanilla. Very good, sounds like a plan. And I'm going to just finish chopping some garlic that I'm going to add to my root vegetables. It's a very colorful dish. And as I say, it takes a lot of chopping. The turnips are hard to cut. Uh, and uh, I thought we can't have the food flying all over here in the <laughs> kitchen. So. What we're going to do is add some garlic. And as I said, I have little potatoes, sweet potatoes. That's another one that's good and very nutritious. I'm going to pour some olive oil over the top of this, and then we'll add some salt and pepper and a little more rosemary. Now, you see if they had time, because they're working 24-7, particularly, well, the men and the women. Uh, and you, you would think they would have time to grow some rosemary or something. There's so many important things that come first, like food, period. So this is going to go in and cook and bake. It's going to roast. There, I've got the word roast. I'm going to open up the oven. We'll put it in. And this will be in probably an hour. And we'll keep that in mind. I have it at 410. 
you can uh, you can always experiment a little bit about the temperature, but I wouldn't start at, at uh, 350. It'll take forever. The, these are really tough. Not tough. They're they're substantial vegetables. Uh, so you're you you've got that down pat. Well, I'm it's, trying. I've oh, seen. Oh, I've I smell that nice I, vanilla. I've seen these women make this for years. So I've added vanilla. And I'm getting ready, and I don't want to freak your viewers out. They tended to just start with half a bag of confectioner sugar. We did measure, and then they went by taste from there. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> right. People didn't have sets of this and sets of that. And they didn't even, many times, they didn't even write the recipes down. Mm -hmm. I know in Indiana, they just sort of passed it down mm -hmm. verbally. And the, a good woman, when she was married, had all this in her head. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so, looks wonderful. Oh, and it's mess? flying everywhere, right. And we all do that, don't we? So my vegetables are in. Uh, I might just chop a little bit more of the yellow pepper and I can always stick it in here. Uh, so Roosevelt came up with the WPA, <coughs> Works Project um, Administration, mm -hmm. to keep people busy. And not just to keep them busy, but to have a lifestyle, to have food, to have sustenance, and to have new skills. And these mm. women in the Kentucky Hills, these women decide they want to go into the hills with books, and they receive them from all over, don't they? They're old books. They're never really new books. And they receive them from all over. They're what folks have already read. They're yes. from libraries or cast off. But the WPA does such great work, not only around literacy, but in the book Fire Safety, but yeah. music and jazz and murals. It was a really wonderful program for it, the United States. It truly was. And these women go out weekly, and they stop at maybe eight or nine homes, and they deliver books. The children, as hungry as they are, and almost to the, to the um, oh, does it taste good? It needs more sugar, ironically enough. Oh, ironically we'll enough. Hey, see, you're going to put some more in. Just a little bit. Just a little. Hey, that's the way to cook, I think. Um, so these women go out, and they have to have their own transportation. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So it might be a horse. It might be a mule. And uh, our heroine here is the one that has a mule. And the mule's name is Junia. And Junia is stubborn as a mule. And it's quite a character of herself yes. in, in the book. She has a real dynamic personality. And she has a role to play mm -hmm. because uh, Cussie wouldn't get anywhere without the mule. And the mule is also her protector. If there's a snake out there, this mule stops dead in her tracks, flares her nose and does a lot of snorting. And if there's a dangerous person that maybe we aren't aware of it that is going to bother uh, Cussie, then the mule is really there to say, whoa, stop all this nonsense. Right. And, and that, that mule is a character, like you say. I brought an apple today because <laughs> anybody that meets her, meets the mule, is her best friend if they offer her an apple. And that's really important. At the same time, there's not much extra food to go around. In fact, we even see the faces of hungry children in the schools, so hungry. And there's a line in the book that and I listened to the book, I know that you yes. read it. There was a line in the book that just stopped me and the main character said how important it is to share food with folks you love. And you see these folks who are just hard scrabbling to find rabbits, oh. to find turkeys, to find seeds. And these children that go to school are in fact starving. They are, and she before does, our very eyes. And she's doing everything she can just to find basic food. And it's it's really staggering. And there's two things for me that stuck out. One, as a superintendent of schools, the importance of literacy. It's one of our main goals. We yes. want to ensure that every student's reading on grade level. And number two, making sure that we're providing food for our students who have food scarcity. And so we feed students when we're closed. We feed students on snow days. And so food's really important to show folks you care about them. Well, you know, later on in the book, we're going to find <clears throat> out that, well, we know that, that Cuzzy is a blue skin person. Let's mm -hmm. talk about this. This is the first time I ever heard of this. And it, I can't begin to pronounce the medical word. Right. And But it is a deficiency in enzymes. It can appear in people who have heart problems. Uh, and it could 
and it came from France. Can you imagine? Maybe that's where the word blue-blooded came from. Perhaps. But the Huguenots brought this. Not all of them. Now let's not go out and say everybody who came from France brought this. It was very rare. It also happened uh, in the Celtic countries. And, but there are many in Kentucky. And I don't know the situation today. I don't know if there is, it has been totally solved. If you just, well, we'll find out about this doctor that wants to cure right. Cussie of this. It gives her a pill and it just makes her violently ill. But we'll, we'll get to that. We just have a few things to do about this first segment. You've got to get the cherries on, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> so I've got to get the cherries on, but we're leaving out a really important part that my mom, Doris, would have done oh. at this point. So with her grandchildren, she's done with the bowl. And while I not do it on TV, she would have done what's called uh, licking the bowl. So Ooh. she would have given the beater and the bowl to her grandchildren, well, and we course. would have finished it up. So oh, that it's a great memory. familiar, doesn't Licking it? Licking the bowl, yeah. right. Uh, and I'm tempted, but I won't do it on your show. So uh, why don't you, yes, why don't yes. you go to the cherries? We you just, we have a minute here on our segment one, and. Uh, so you simply dump on the cherries. That's a good style there right there. You know how to do that. I do, I've seen Beautifully. women do it yes. for years. And, now, and then I'll put the cap on the pie. I'll put it in the refrigerator to let it chill. Very, very good. That's nice. Yes, you want to firm up a little mm -hmm. bit so that when you do cut the slices, they don't uh, just whoosh all over the plate. All right, while you're finishing up the touches here, we're going to take a short break. We want to show you some pictures from this book about the true book women of Kentucky. You will see them with their students and with their horses and you will see them on the mountaintops. And we'll be right back. Don't go away. And today our book is The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek. My guest is Todd Cummings, superintendent of schools, who loves reading. I love reading. It's important that all of our students are reading on grade level. You are so right. And you know, in this segment, we're going to talk about another character that comes in who's very important. But, but before we talk about the doctor, let's mm -hmm. talk about what you're going to be doing and what you've already done to get this dish ready. Sure. So we're going to do salmon patties that my mom, Doris, as we called her, made on Sundays. And so we use two cans of salmon, two eggs, a quarter cup of cornmeal. I'm going to add salt and pepper, and then I'm going to stir it up and make hamburger patties and out of it. And you're going to put some crackers in, I'm too. I'm going to put crackers yeah. in to bind. So. so the eggs are already here, mm -hmm. and so why don't you just do that and get your uh, your crackers. i got to wait to see how he's going to crunch these crackers. I find this very interesting. Same way my grandmother did. All right, we're going to learn something here. I'm and what, mix a little bit first. I think that's a good idea. Those crackers have a tendency to take over when right. they enter a dish. Uh, and we, we're talking about this uh, Appalachian section of Kentucky. We're talking about people with blue skins. It's an inherited uh, blood disorder. And uh, we are going to continue on with the doctor. The doctor takes a very important role because, mm -hmm. you know, this is a very racist area. They think that she is just un shouldn't be touched, shouldn't be around her because her skin is blue. And this doctor wants to help her. And in the beginning, she's very enthusiastic about this, mm -hmm. isn't she? She is. And so she goes with him to a hospital where she's kind of ma manhandled by some, <laughs> well, I don't want to say nuns, but to they were, the weren't right. they? Mm -hmm. And they took, they put her out, and they took blood samples, and she came to, and she, she, it, she got sick from this in ingestion, this pill, this, uh, what's it, injection or it was, pill? It started off as an injection and then the doctor had access to it in pill form, right. which still made her ill. After about 16 hours, she became violently mm -hmm. ill. And little by little, Excuse me, let me turn and, oh, please do. Uh, some of her friends, and she's met a young man along the way who has been out west. His name is Jason Lovett. And the children, these children that are waiting for her, they don't even know or care that she's blue skinned. They just love her. And uh, these people can't wait for her to come. And she reads to some of the people. She was educated by her mother uh, in the sense she can read 
And I don't know about writing. <coughs> I, I don't. I can't remember that aspect. But the reading was the real uh, uh, test there. Mm -hmm. So, are you all mashed? And, and I'm mashed, and I'm about to make hamburger patties out of them. Okay, I think it's a good thing to get started on. Absolutely good. Uh, so, she uh, she thinks she can be white enough to go to the Independence Day party, and her skin is light, and and she doesn't have blue skin while she's on this medicine, even though it makes her violently ill. How is she treated? at this celebration. I found that so fascinating. She's treated the exact same way as if she were blue. So even though she's white yes. and her color has returned to what some people would consider, consider a Caucasian color, she's still treated the exact same way. Yes, and they just don't want to give up their racism, right? right? They've got it in their teeth. They're gonna keep it no matter what. Uh, while you're doing that, I'm heating up some spinach and I've added some uh, white vinegar. I have cooked some onions. We're gonna stir it up here and add some salt and pepper. And I know this is a small side dish, but you know, it's, it's the way they ate. They ate a lot of root vegetables, as we say, and spinach and chicken eggs. And they even eat rattlesnake. They I mean, did. they real, and rabbits, turtles. They are, some of these children are dying right in the front of the eyes of Cussie as she mm. goes to the schools and the homes. That's how, that's really how tumultuous this is. Uh, I did have to say, I found the rattlesnake part striking. And I think that was just an example of how they were scraping and scrounging for anything, anything to eat, anything yes. to eat. And it was Junia the mule that caught mm -hmm. the, uh, that, Actually, I think she kicked the, the <coughs> snake. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know if, I think it was one of the girls that, that took the snake and they were going to cook it mm -hmm. at home. Uh, so this doctor wants to keep treating uh, Cussie. She's finding that her really true supporters and this friend, Jason, they like her just the way she is, mm -hmm. right? And since she's so miserable, she says, I'm not going to take this anymore. It right. literally makes her fall apart when she takes this medicine. But what is the trade out she makes with the doctor? He wants to keep doing tests on her, drawing blood. So she trades, I, I think there's two interesting facts. One, she makes a trade off with food for bread and cheese for these students in school yes. who are just starving in front of her eyes. But also there's an interesting conversation when she turns skin color back to white. Now she's judged by her father and by others oh. for cosmetics, for her weight. It becomes a fascinating twist of logic after that. It sounds like modern times, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Really. It was an interesting narrative. Uh, it really was. Uh, and her father's a coal miner, and that's a very important mm -hmm. part of this story. This is a hard life, and he is get, he's involved in some clandestine activities right. with the union. She's worried about him. She always has a meal for him, does his clothes. He comes home covered in coal dust. Uh, he is kind, but he wants her married off. Mm -hmm. And so what he, he puts, he has this candle, and it's called a courting candle, and I kind of got confused about mm. how long the wick was and how long it was to burn. Well, it was really offensive. And so the longer the wick, the more time the quarter had, which meant that um, she was was more apt not to be selected. And then the shorter the candle, the less time he had. And so when they saw that they had a long candle, people knew that she was, um, uh, she didn't have any other quarters. They had plenty of time and they were really only interested in the land deed that the Father the father was going to give this this uh, suitor uh, ten acres of land and five dollars, mm -hmm. and it, she ran <clears throat> into some really terrible. Oh, men. some terrible people. One man was so awful, and he ends up being shot by somebody we don't know exactly by whom. But hmm, I th wonder. This this also happens to her twice, and of course there is religion that comes in mm -hmm. that if only she would allow this man to go to bed, if she would go to mm -hmm. bed with him, she would be cured of her sins and her blue mm -hmm. skin would disappear. There was so much misinformation. And it was mythology, mm -hmm. there, there, this courting candle. I mean, there's so much in this book and it's very nice to read. And that every page, you think you've seen the end. Yes. And then it, 
just gets worse. It does get mm -hmm. worse. And at the same time, she loves to see these children and they love to see her. And she, she worries about her dad because he's at some night meetings about the coal union and he could be murdered for that. Right. Ooh, those look good. Thank you. And as soon as you're across that. You know what I'm gonna do? If you don't mind, I'll I, turn the heat down just a little. And I do think. The other side now. Yes. Oh, this looks lovely. My mother used to make these. Uh, we didn't call them croquettes. We just called them patties. <laughs> right. And I just loved them. Uh, but now, hmm, you said we always have a drink on this show. So what have you brought today? Well, when we were initially talking about the show and what we were going to make and we got done, and I said, well, Gail, you always have a cocktail at the end of the show. And, she said, and you said, well, what cocktail would work today? And I said, well, moonshine plays a pretty important part. So thanks to our friends at a local liquor store, they have these uh, shot size uh, moonshine. So I thought perhaps we could cheers to a great show and a great book. And, and you're a great company. Thank you, and you and, as well. And I can't possibly take this all. I would be talking about some other book. I'd be calling you Charles. Sure. So just a sip at you. But I think in honor of the book, I think I'm going to. Mm -hmm. It is Saturday mm. morning after all. Or it Monday night. Right. It is Monday Saturday night at 1030. Or right. Night. This is not bad. Yeah. Actually. Cheers. It's a little hot. Yes. But I did ask um, some local bartender friends. I said, so if we were going to mix moonshine with something and take the heat out, they recommended citrus. Oh, yeah. But they, but there was no citrus to be found in this book. No, that's true. No yeah. citrus to be found. It's, so it, it, that's stretching it, isn't it? It would be. So but I thought. At the same time, sometimes we do have to stretch a little bit and <laughs> we get the food from that era. Gosh, we've got a minute here. Oh. My my uh, spinach is heating up. Uh, so, who are the heroes in this story? That's a, that's an excellent question, and I believe that. It's the librarians who are, who are insistent, and it's their passion that students learn. I would also say it's the students who want the books, because with that and as they read and grow, you start to see how their perceptions change, you see how they're learning, how these myths tend to start to go away. So I would say both of, both of them. All of that, yes. <clears throat> and, and of course, I think Junia is also. Oh, of course. She gets this. <laughs> she gets cussy around and takes care of her, even though she doesn't like other people. Right. Unless they have an apple. Now, we're going to make our finishing touches on our meal. We invite you for a Kentucky sit down dinner. And in the meantime, I want to show you a list of some Kentucky writers and a list of some of the titles, the books that our author has written. And don't go away, don't move, stay right there, we'll be right back. Today, our book is The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek, and this is set in Kentucky. Great story, and I have a great guest, Todd Cummings, the new superintendent of schools in South Bend. And let's talk briefly about what we made and then what we take away from this book. Sure. I did some spinach with onions. I could just go to the garden and pull them out. And with the thyme, I grew root vegetables. It's a wonderful kind of... Uh, it's almost, you could add sausage in this and have a one dish meal. And tell us about what you made. And I made two of my grandmother's recipes that growing up, I didn't realize they were depression era food, but they are. I made salmon patties and I made my grandmother's cherry delight. Isn't this great? This is a delight. And I grew up on those salmon mm -hmm. patties too, but we just thought that's what everybody was mm -hmm. having, salmon patties. Uh, I have to say the, the part of the book I really appreciated was getting to know these people, to learn about the blue skin people and uh, this very strong young woman that is really a help to so many people. What's your takeaway from the book? I had three takeaways. One, the importance of literacy, especially the importance of literacy in my job and what teachers do. I was struck yet again by the notion 
of how important it is to show love through food. We feed what we love, whether yes. it's our grandchildren or our parents, uh, parents or mm. our, our uh, siblings or our animals. We feed yes. what we love. And for me, it was an important takeaway to revisit my grandmothers and to revisit where they were and their history and their notion of caring for their grandkids and feeding what they love. So it's been nice to, uh, to, to think about them this week as I practiced. Yes, and you, you really had a tie-in here. Like, but all of us have a tie-in to some of these stories, no matter what they are. And it might be through food, it might be through family experience, it might be through deprivation, but we all kind of share this this kind of uh, background. I love the book. I'm so glad you could be on today. Thank you for coming. Well, thank you for being a gracious host. I've had a terrific time. Oh, and good. the book was, was terrific. I thought it was gonna be sad, but not to give it away, it's, it's a really terrific book. One of the best I've read I in a long agree. time. I agree. And remember, good food, good friends, good books make for a great life. And thank you for coming. And thank you, Gail. We'll see you next time. Bye. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. Dinner and a Book is supported by the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation of Elkhart, celebrating the spirit of Alice Martin and her love of good food and good friends.